Hi everybody, welcome to Amy Nolte Music. Today, after four and a half years of YouTube, is actually my very first Q&A. First thing, I wanna give a little shout out to John Paul Designs based in Bend, Oregon for the sweet custom necklace I got for a Christmas present. You should totally check them out on their Instagram page. Question number one, as a highly talented female musician, does sexism hurt you or fuel you? First of all, thank you for the compliment. I've been lucky not to have sexism in music, at least directed at me very much in my life at all. But when it is, or I notice it in any situation directed at me or directed at somebody else, I always do my best to fix it and move on. If that means kindly correcting somebody or letting them know that they actually were sexist in that moment, even if they didn't realize it, or sometimes just keeping my cool and doing my job. Depends on the situation, but I think moving on is key. We're going forward with this. The ladies have landed. We got work to do. No sense in letting it hang us up too much, but I do have a video about female instrumentalists in jazz and a playlist on Spotify by the same name. One thing everybody can do is to listen to more female instrumentalists. I think we can all always do better at trying to get rid of sexism in music. Question number two, are you taking private students? No, I'm not, but I recently put out a video on my YouTube channel where I introduce you to several capable musicians that want to teach you private lessons. It's called, Let Me Help You Find a Teacher. You should totally check it out because there are some really good musicians that are also great educators. Question number three, it's my birthday. When's yours? It was in October, but happy birthday to you. Question four, how do you deal with procrastination? I'll just say that a deadline is a beautiful thing. I often need a deadline in order to finish a project. And sometimes that means self-imposing a deadline. Say I've got three projects that all have to be done in January. I'll just arbitrarily choose some dates. Project one has to be done on the 7th, project two on the 14th, project three on the 21st, and then I hold myself accountable to these deadlines. But I think even if you're not working on something for somebody else and they're just your own projects, you can still impose deadlines on yourself. And, but the key is to hold yourself accountable, I think. You just kind of create a bogus deadline. I don't know, for me it works. Next question, funk in three, four? Well, I've never tried it myself, but I'm inclined to say, heck yes. I made a little something for you with the help of New Jersey drummer, Tom Cartone. Question number six, how do you stay inspired when making music and don't feel like it's worth it? For me, if music doesn't feel right, it usually means that there's something amiss in the rest of my life. So if the music stops flowing, I kind of turn my attention to everything else. I make sure my relationships are strong, finances are in order, my house is tidy, people that, I, that are in my circle of influence are healthy and happy. I just think if your life's in order, the music's gonna follow. Question seven, what is your favorite chord or voicing? Maybe a minor second on the bottom and then one more note, a fifth above on top. I love the way this voicing sounds with various bass notes. Maybe A flat. Or A. C, D, E, F, G. So many possibilities. Question eight, when are we getting tacos? Now. Tacos, now, always. Next question, will you show us more piano covers? Of course I will. Question 10, what things have you enjoyed listening to lately? Rainbow by Doty has been a recent favorite of mine. I am a rainbow. Tell me that I'm bright. 
ZT by Jacob Mann. Desert Song by Sage. It's up for a Grammy. The undertow will let you lose your way. And a brand new album by my guitar player, Mike Scott, called Collecting Things. Question 11. East Coast or West Coast for the best music scene? I've done both, but it's been a long time since I lived in New York. My main takeaway, having lived on both coasts and played music in both places, is kind of that there's just a different vibe. It's a little more relaxed, well, a lot more relaxed in LA, in my experience. Less cutthroat than it is in New York City. If you're thinking about choosing one or the other, I'd kind of tell you to go where your friends are. It's always a good idea to have connections when you move someplace. For me, LA was a better fit, but I absolutely love both places. And I think that everybody should live in LA and New York at some point in their life if they can do it. Next question, what helps you most when you feel like your vocabulary has been the same for a while? I think the answer to this question might be the same with music as it is in speaking if you're tired of, of your vocabulary and your language. With language, it, I think it probably means you're not reading enough. I don't know about you, but when I'm engaged in a good book, my vocabulary just takes a little uptick. I sound a little smarter. And in the case of music, if your vocabulary is feeling stagnant, it's probably because you're not listening enough. Listening is key. When you're listening and you hear something that you like and that you know that you couldn't replicate right there on the spot, you gotta press pause, take out your manuscript paper, write it down, figure it out, figure out how to make it happen on your instrument. Then you have to study it and try to put it everywhere you can. I actually have a video about this. It's called Learn a Lick, Insert It Everywhere. Favorite Brad Meldow album, The Art of the Trio, Volume 3. You listen to Song Song, there's no turning back. Last question, what was the first album you bought? I don't really want to get into that right now. You're going to have to hold on for one more day. Someday somebody's going to make you want to turn around and say goodbye. It was women singing harmony. Give me a break. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for watching my very first Q&A, and thanks for asking the questions and for listening to them right now. Everybody take care. Happy New Year. Stay healthy, stay safe, and stay happy, and stay practicing. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.